Over the past few weeks, we've been seeing a lot of activity from the DLC-sized mods on their way to Fallout 4. We saw some major updates from Fallout 4 in New Vegas, and even Fallout Miami just had a big update that I will be covering shortly. But on the other side of things, we also have been getting a ton of releases from Fallout 4 The Capital Wasteland Project, that being the Fallout 3 remake mod for Fallout 4. Like all of those other projects, this too is a fan-made mod, and in particular, we've been going off of this roadmap. This predominantly coming from a couple members of the project, the Fried Turkey, as well as HCG Grow, and it truly has been unprecedented to basically lay out over a couple of months a ton of awesome mods you're going to bring to the game and then actually release all of them. I mentioned this because as of right now, we actually just got the finale of this. Everything on this page has actually now come out and you can download it. And In this video, I'll be showing you some of the final and arguably best releases. But just in general, a huge shout out to this mod team to actually create a roadmap like this, having some content to to share on it a couple of months ahead of time and then to stick to it and have all of these releases come out on time and relatively bug free is actually a massive feat it's something very unique and something hopefully we'll see more of in the future well either way taking a look first at the final and biggest release so far we do have fox many of you guys probably remember this guy as he was one of the companions from fallout 3 and basically in fallout 4 he's taking on that exact same role you'll find him and actually have to save him from the boston public library Library. After you recruit him as a follower, there'll actually be several other super mutants to spawn down, and after fighting your way out, you'll have him as your own companion. He, of course, does have his own custom look, much more akin to what we saw in Fallout 3 super mutants, which do look quite a bit different than Fallout 4's take on them. I personally like this, I think it makes him feel unique and special, but even further, just having him follow you around and super sludge enemies to death is really fun. Like, he has easily become one of my favorite follower mods just as a result of how satisfying that animation is, but also of course you do have the nostalgia effect going along with it. Which speaking of, I would say what makes this such a significant mod and something quite different from a lot of the other ones is it is fully voice acted. You certainly aren't the first person to express such a thing, though you are the first here in this city to entertain the notion of conversation. All the others have been far more interested in shooting first and asking questions later. Or maybe never. But where are my manners? I have forgotten to introduce myself. I am Fox. So as you just heard, as you actually talk to Fox in Fallout 4, it's not like it's just ripping some of the lines from Fallout 3. This is a peek and a look at the new voice acting that will be coming with this larger mod. And this is pretty significant. Nothing like this has really been done for Fallout 4 thus far. It's a truly interactive piece of content that appeared in one of the past games, but of course is now updated to a Fallout 4 quality. Again, outside of that, it is a typical companion. As of right now, at least there is no custom quest, but if you boost his affinity high enough, you will get a custom perk to go along with him, and he's a pretty cool one. He does have dialogue he'll say from time to time, and of course, some of that initial dialogue does feel very unique and special. But hey, maybe you want somebody else to go along with you, and outside of that, we also do have the DC Mole Rats. This was the second to last release on the roadmap, but I've yet to cover it on the channel, and put simply, it'll add Fallout 3 styled Mole Rats into Fallout 4. By default, the Fallout 4 Mole Rats look like this, and these new ones look like this. Although to be clear, this is not a replacer for the vanilla Mole Rats, now you'll just have two different options of what kind of mole rats may spawn, but even further, pretty cool, there's also a little follower to go along with this. This will be a new custom made mole rat named Remy, a very simple one, it's basically like a dog that will just follow you around and not occupy a follower slot, but also there's several custom outfits added that you could actually attach to him to make Remy look pretty awesome. All in all, it's one of those mods that really doesn't change a huge portion of the game, but I think what it brings to the table are cool new features. It's one of those mods I'll probably just keep in my load order for a long time because even though it's relatively minor, I really like what it does. But again, a huge shout out to Fallout for the Capital Wasteland Project. I'll have links to their social media down below if you want to see some of their more recent updates on other things they're working on. But this has definitely been a pretty cool achievement over the past couple of months, releasing all of these various mods. Although, outside of that, there have been several other new mods to come to Fallout 4. So one of the most popular mods just overall for this game is West Tech Tactical Optics. What this mod will do is add in a bunch of nifty little goggles 
controls you can use on your character. And when you activate these, they'll actually have a variety of different effects, whether it be night vision, thermal vision, or just highlighting enemies. By default, the way this will work and how you'll turn it on and off is actually just hotkeying a certain aid item. And what this new mod is going to do is actually add in MCM support for this. It's very simple, but now in the mod configuration menu, you could actually assign a manual hotkey, giving you one, a lot more options as far as hotkeys go. You could use something like a third party thing on your mouse, which you typically couldn't with an aid item. And in general, considering this is such a widely used mod, it's a great quality of life feature that I'll definitely be keeping as long as I use West Tech Tactical Optics. But if you want something a little bit newer, a little bit more custom, we also do have VIX Commonwealth Map Extended Project. This is a pretty cool one, and I personally really like mods like this. In effect, what it's going to do is actually add in a bit of new content into the northeast of Fallout 4's Commonwealth. This previously was a fairly desolate area, there just wasn't a ton going on here. But now with this mod, you're going to find in a strip of new buildings. Some of these are explorable, there's several new NPCs placed down around, and of course, loot placed throughout. It's not like this is a new quest mod or really adding in a ton of custom content, it's just one of those mods that flushes out an area of Fallout 4 that was otherwise kind of neglected. This is only one of the first versions of this, so it is planned to get future updates, and hopefully we'll see more and more custom content added in, but at least as of right now, it adds in a nice little area for you to explore and adventure through. So while that one actually adds in a new area, True Caves is going to give a lot of life to some of the older areas of Fallout 4. What this mod's going to do is make it so the previously kind of dirt-packed cave will actually now look more like real caves, featuring rocky walls and ceilings. It didn't really make a ton of sense in Fallout 4 how dirt just lined the walls of every underground location. The support or stability of that was kind of questionable, and there weren't really any true caves in this game until you have this mod. This has a secondary effect of actually making some of these locations a bit brighter just due to some of the reflections, as you can see in the background, and I personally like this one. It's new, different, and refreshing, but also, of course, does make quite a bit more sense than rocks and dirt packed together. And then next up, we have another entry into one of my favorite category of mods, and that is the Modern Weapon Replacers. This time around, we are getting the H&K MP5 Complex. This is a mod I actually just covered earlier this week. It's an amazing weapon mod. We've actually been getting several pretty top tier, like next level weapon mods for this game. And with this modern weapon replacer, it's going to take the SMG and the Radium Rifle in Fallout 4 and replace it with the MP5 Complex. You could choose to do either both the SMG and Radium Rifle or just one or the other. And personally, I love this kind of content. I hate the SMG. I don't like seeing it in Fallout 4. I really could be okay with never seeing it again. Conversely, the MP5 Complex is an awesome weapon mod and it's something that I think makes the game a little bit more interesting. You're taking away some of that old and familiar content and adding in something new and I think actually done a lot better. But then next up, we have a couple of outfits to add to your Fallout 4 that I think some of you guys will definitely like. First, we have the Commonwealth Survival Gear. This is a pretty simple one, but one I think a lot of people have been looking for. This will add an outfit and some equipment that would just make sense if there really was an apocalypse. If you in real life were preparing for an event like what you see in Fallout 4, you would probably be wearing this. For that reason, of course, it is very realistic. Some would even say it's kind of immersive in Fallout 4. But also of a similar vein, we also do have the Xbox release of the Biohazard suit. This is one of those mods that's been on PC for a little while now, but just came to Xbox over the past couple of weeks. All it's going to do is add in a new hazmat style suit into the game with several customization options. I think this actually looks awesome. It's one of the coolest looking hazmat suits mods I've seen thus far looks way cooler than the default hazmat suit and it of course operates as a totally functional alternative. It doesn't replace the traditional one, it just adds in something else that you can keep in your inventory and you could use this and look much cooler rather than the typical hazmat suit you find in game. But otherwise, yeah, that is a look at all the new Fallout 4 mods content to come out over the past couple of weeks. A lot of really big things, a lot of really cool things just got added to this game. Although, before we end things off, I do want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day. So at this point, I'm probably the most far removed from my psychology education that I really have been at any point. It has been the longest period of time since I've actually sat in a psychology class outside of just actually starting college. But one thing more so than anything else that has stuck with me is actually around memory. And I think just in general, in life, this is something good to know. So as you remember things, especially significant memories from far out, there's actually a pretty good chance what you're remembering isn't totally accurate. This becomes particularly true when taking into account memories 
memories for kind of a dramatic or high stress event that's known as a flashbulb memory or childhood memories or just reminiscing to a time in the past. One of the core reasons for this is as you actually recall a memory something's going to happen. When it's a very fresh and new memory all you're getting is that memory trace that being basically what's stored in your brain specific neurons firing through certain synapses to actually trigger that memory. But as you recall things over and over again you are actually repackaging that memory. Even though initially it's just going to be that raw trace, over time your brain will add additional context. At face value this actually is kind of useful. Most of the time it does prove to be a fairly handy thing. It's like let's say you have this raw memory of when you were a kid and you were doing something but then your parents told you oh yeah by the way here's some added context. This was actually going on at the same time. Your brain will kind of package that all together and just turn it into one memory. So like let's say you recall yourself playing in your house as a kid but then there's a picture from that day and you can see you're wearing a red shirt. Now when you remember that moment you might picture yourself with a red shirt and think oh yeah I remember I was wearing a red shirt back then. Even though that information came from a different source, a third party source, not your own memory originally. So at times this obviously can be super helpful but at other times it can be super harmful. When you take it under consideration with something like an eyewitness memory, it's like if somebody witnessed a crime but each time they thought about that crime there was a bit of repackaging going on. Maybe somebody a friend to them suggested oh wasn't it that guy and now they might think oh it actually was that guy and there's been serious issues where people are super adamant that one thing happens they could vividly remember it was this person that committed that crime but then there's clear video evidence that no it actually wasn't that it was a totally separate person and really what happened was their memory took in some additional context and added that all together to create something different the reason I bring this up is more so it's just good to know that your memory isn't perfect as you think about things as you remember things it feels pretty freaking accurate but it's it's not always the case. Oftentimes, what you're actually remembering isn't just what you experienced, it actually has a lot of other stuff mixed in, which isn't always true. Either way, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this one. Hopefully, you found this video informative, hopefully, you enjoyed it. But with that,